Hi, this is Alicia, and I'm just doing a video. Uh, it's been a minute. Just, I have a couple of things I want to talk about. One, I just saw Good Hair, that documentary by um, Chris Rock, and I have to say that even though it was funny, um, I don't think it said or told anything that black women already don't know <laughs> concerning relaxers, hair weaves, and wigs. I think maybe men, black, some black men might not have been aware about how much um, black women go through to try to beautify ourselves. I think, um, you know, and then I think the attack, because I, I felt as if the movie was attacking the grooming, the hair grooming choices that black women make um, concerning our hair. I mean, you would think that black women just started straightening our hair 10 years ago. Fact of the matter, Madam C.J. Walker, you know, became a millionaire based on the straightening comb and the greases and the pomades and everything else that were used to straighten uh, kinky curly hair into more of a uh, straight European simulation type of hair. Um, and we can all go into some kind of historical rhetoric about why we do what we do. But at this stage of the game, I think for me personally, you know, I wear my hair straight, I wear my hair curly, I have curly afros, I have straight curly afro wigs, I have wigs that kind of look like this, you know, more of a spiral curl look. I have wigs that are just straight or slightly body wavy. To me, hair is like, it's an accessory. It's like clothing. It's like the difference between, between me putting on mascara or fake eyelashes. You know, one looks more like me. The other one looks, is a more enhanced me. Does it mean that if, if I choose to wear fake eyelashes or false eyelashes as opposed to just mascara, then I'm trying to fool people into thinking that my eyelashes really actually go up to my eyebrow? You know, you know if that's what you think, then hey, whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's an enhancement. I don't, I, I choose not to really think that, that black men, white people, I don't even really care really think that I feel that my own natural hair is so unappealing that I won't wear it. And as I said in an earlier video, I, I have to wear hair pieces. Um, so I guess I'm one of those people, if I have to wear one, I'm just not going to be a slave to a particular wig trying to make people think that it's really my hair because I'm not fooling anybody but myself. Um, so, you know, that being said, and I think even if even if I didn't have to wear them, what's wrong with me choosing to wear them if I want to wear them? Um, some of the ladies that I went out with when we saw the movie, um, because there's a reference in the film where this one lady was selling uh, lace front wigs for $1,000. One, whoever her customers are, they're stupid as the day is long because those wigs look ratty, tatty. They look like they may have cost all of fifty dollars, let alone a thousand. She, they were stupid for buying it. Two, um, any woman or any person who buys something where when you have to make a choice between buying a wig or paying your rent or paying your car note or paying something, paying you know you have to choose the necessity over a want. And if you choose your wig, your weave, your nails, your Manolo Blahniks your Mercedes Benz um, that you really can't afford, or your $600,000 house that you can't afford to be in either. Um, you know, put all of that in the pot. Don't just attack the woman who chooses to wear the weed because we all have something. If it's not the hair, it's the shoes. If it's not the shoes, it's the clothes. Sometimes it's both, sometimes it's all. Men will buy Cadillacs they can't afford trying to show off. Mercedes Benz, Lexus, Infinities, you name it. And now Bentleys, I hear Bentleys are making a comeback in black America as if 
we're in, a, in the middle of a freaking recession and people are really talking about buying Bentleys. That's the most absurd thing I've heard in a long time, but I digress. Anyway, the movie was great. I thought it was funny. I just wish people didn't take uh, docu-comedies so seriously and try to make statements about um, this, the, the psyche of the conscious of the average black woman based upon the fact that uh, a lot of us in this country relax our hair, straighten our hair. A lot of us wear weaves, a lot of us wear wigs, and that's it. And white women do too. White women wear extensions. White women dye their hair blonde. White women um, get Botox injections. White women, so do black women. I'm not hating on the white women. It's just like, don't think the black women are the only ones who are doing things to enhance the way we look or to alter the way that we look from our purely natural state. There are not that many women, I dare say, who would really want to walk around in their natural state unless they are just beautiful, drop dead gorgeous women. A lot of women wear makeup. That's that's an alteration of how you look. Um, the hair, not too many women, black, white, whatever, are wearing their own natural hair. And it's purely an unaltered state. While white women get curly perms or something to put some bounce in the hair as opposed to just being lip straight. You know, so it goes on. It goes on and on. So people, let's let's just keep it real, keep it keep it light and not make snap judgments because some people choose to wear their hair in a way outside of its natural state. And that's all I really have to say. Y'all take care. See you next time. Bye.